So boarding school is a family decision, mm -hmm. right? It was um, my parents thought it was a good idea. I thought it was a good idea, but it was such a hard decision because I had like planted my roots in Swan. I could really see like how I could grow and develop there. But mm -hmm. the unfortunate thing was it was you know. So I was going through a lot of structural changes when I was in 10th grade and I wasn't sure that it would give me the best possible um, preparation and jumping off point to apply to universities and get into good colleges, mm -hmm. right? It, like it just didn't have like the strongest college prep program, mm -hmm. I guess, and it didn't have like the right IB subjects I wanted to do either. And I figured if I'm going to move schools, I might as well move out of the country, like mm -hmm. moving to like a GIS or BIS, mm -hmm. oh I think God. just wasn't like worth it like if i was gonna stay in indo i'll stay in swan yeah i mean this isn't like i mean don't get me wrong the education at gist was great great the, yeah the education the education was great i don't think it's any better or any worse than any other international school that you could find either here in indonesia or any other mm, country exactly it's just not much but of there's a difference so, so much from personal personal to just conflict yeah it's the yeah. society this society it's it's, yeah. it's, it's society. separate from the studies and i still remember like that some of the teachers that I've had, they were actually really passionate on what, like, what, what subject they like actually taught. Mm -hmm. I remember, like, I would skip a bunch of classes, but the one class I would never skip was English. Miss MacArthur, like, oh! insane, like, blew my mind. I had Miss MacArthur for my uh, senior year. Um, hold on, was this? Yeah, my senior year. Yeah, English, right? Or for IB, yeah. Insane, amazing. I don't think she realized, like her classroom was literally like a sanctuary for me like mm -hmm. that was the one class i would not skip it d doesn't matter how sad i was i would actually want to go to her class mm -hmm. and like they noticed that they're like why do you always end up in english and it's just because like i don't know i felt like i was being praised for just being good at it mm -hmm. versus like all my other classes like i felt like i was failing a lot so i would just like avoid it you know yeah, but yeah. Yeah, I, know. I don't want this to be like an expose for Jis, by the way. Yeah, I, no, uh, no. But then I'm like, hey, 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 hey. Like, me and Jis, anyone watching this from Jis, like, we're 100% on good terms. I have nothing to do with you anymore. I'm mm -hmm. completely unassociated with my past in many ways, so I'm thriving. I'm fine. Yeah, we, we already covered the work thing. I mean, yeah, we did cover the work thing a little bit. Mm -hmm. But she covered that, the saying goodbye thing was, diff was hard. Oh, fuck. That. Not uh, actually, really see not no. not really and act and actually I wanted to have you on my my podcast like legit like you and yeah. me sit down like one on one and like we talk about this like, okay okay, okay so we, we can, can say that for another time for another time because no. I have a lot to say on that sure. no I feel like we could stick to the topic that we're talking about now it's fine like we can literally make this video about whatever like just the how difficult it is being at an international school and it's like because I feel like a lot of Indonesians especially if we're just keeping this to Indonesia like strictly mm -hmm. just Indo. Which is a very unique case, by the way. Yeah. Very unique in itself. They, they look at international schools with such rose tinted glasses and like, you know, international school kids and, you know, they look at us in a way that's like, oh, you know, no, there's nothing wrong in their lives and like, it's super easy and like, I, and I, I don't know, sometimes I don't know if they're just talking about that in the context of the Indonesian international students that mm -hmm. go to international schools, which is, is a completely okay. different. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. And it's a completely different, I don't know, I'm kind of rambling about this. I'm not really doing a good job, but I'll just get it out. It's more so just like people need to understand that at international schools, not all of the kids that go there come from a lot of money. Like, I mean, we talked about this in the first uh, video with Jay, how there was that one kid I just and like his parents had to give up eating meat just to be able to save up. And you like, touched on that. And uh, I was like, wow, okay, she gets it. Yeah. She gets it. Okay. Because I, see, I don't know who you hung out with back in just, I didn't have, I didn't hung out with the, with the chindos. That's something that really? people, pe people, people, do, and that's something that people either don't know or like, I mean, yeah, people assume it a lot of times because I think it's this assumption of like, oh, if you're chindo, you just stick with like other chindos. But like, mm -hmm. no, back in just, all of my friends, like my intimate group of friends, like were all the expat kids and I was the only chindo there. So. Actually, I, yeah, I, I was, my whole crew was white, but they bullied me for it, and I was the only Asian there. But that was a different story. That's fine, sorry. Derailed. Okay. Yeah. No. I mean, the understanding of, like, a lot of the kids that go there, they're foreigners, like, they come from expat families. Like, not all of them are, you know, rolling around in money, and, like, you know, they're there because their company Their company is paying pay for it. Yeah, their company yeah. is But there's this over-glorified... Over-glorification of, like, bules and foreigners, right? Mm -hmm. So I think even if those kids have are going to just because um, their companies are paying for it, I think Indonesians getting to go to just like, sekolah sama bule-bule, mm -hmm. 
sama Oh, there's like a prestige yeah, to Yeah, there's it. a prestige there's to a Oh, prestige dia, dia temennya bule, dia yeah. pacarnya bule Like, I see it mm-hmm. all the time on Indonesian social media mm-hmm. And that's, I think, part of the thing mm-hmm. that glorifies going to a place, a place like JIS yeah. Not, yeah. You know? Yeah. Because there are a lot of foreigners mm-hmm. But at the end of the day, I think it's mostly because people don't have access to, to foreigners as much Like yeah. in, in sekolah negeri, sekolah swasta mm-hmm. So then they fill in the blanks based of like what they see in movies and mm-hmm. on YouTube and Instagram or yeah. whatever They don't understand, people are just people At least in my experience, it's either it's the the whole Oh, mm-hmm. she's an Indonesian that goes to school with bules, like all these white people mm-hmm. It's either something that is romanticized or looked down upon In my experience, I've had both So there are the people that, because they romanticize white people, mm. they look up to white people because white supremacy is still very much a thing here in Indonesia, oh, yeah. right? And that's an entirely different conversation that we're going to have on this channel some other time. But um, there are the people that look at it that way and then there are the people that look at it like, oh, and especially me because I didn't hang out with all the chindos and all my friends were, you know, there are some white kids and then but also mostly like the Japanese kids and like the Korean kids, mm-hmm. right? But they look at me with my white friends and they kind of assume that like, oh, she must be having free sex just like them. She must be doing nah, drugs just like yeah, them. Yeah, she yeah, must yeah, be, yeah, she, yeah, 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 she yeah, must yeah, be doing like, nakal, yeah, anak nakal, 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 like that's, yeah, the, that's the assumption. Yeah, yeah, so it's yeah, either yeah. something that is hyper romanticized or just hyper vilified. No, like, and it's not never, never in between. You're just so to add on that, so like I went to boarding school 11th and 12th grade and I went to a super British school, like mostly white kids So like 95% of my friends in high school were white, right? And when I've posted like throwback pictures or like whatever, I've gotten DMs like Kak, gimana sih caranya punya temen bule? Atau, Kak, seru banget But I've also gotten comments like Oh, pasti kamu liberal, like that's a bad thing Or like, pasti kamu <laughs> l- like terlalu <laughs> free life <laughs> Or whatever, and I'm just like, why are you all so, why are you all so obsessed with putting people in a box? Mm-hmm. You know, just because you hang out with a certain race doesn't mean like you are A, B, C, and D. You mm-hmm. know, um, and just because like you go to an international school doesn't mean that you're rich. Blah blah blah. blah. We've covered this. We've covered mm-hmm. this. We've co- we've, um, we've covered this. We've covered a lot of this in like yeah. our first video. So like I know like in those JU videos and even in some of the content we make, like it, it's very much like entertaining and we talk a lot about like the, the luxury and everything. But mm-hmm. the point the the point that I think a lot of people haven't quite like internalized yet is that beyond all of that, it's international schools and international students, it's the whole environment is super dynamic and it's that we're all so different like what Inda said in the end of one of the videos like we're not a monolith and we're Ooh. at the end of the day we're all just people mm-hmm. with with our own sets of like problems flaws insecurities and, and mm-hmm. just because like certain parts of our life um, are I guess very privileged very privileged certain parts of our life are taken care of you know mm-hmm. Um, like I did, that doesn't mean we're immune. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I, okay, I, I, ne- I, I've never had to worry about like what I'm gonna eat. What I'm gonna eat, and I'm about, grateful like, for that. But family. that doesn't mean that I've never had to worry. Mm-hmm. You know? Of course, people it's like worry about different things. things. Yeah. At every level, there's something that's that's lacking. You know? Yes. Mm-hmm. That affects people in different ways, and mm-hmm. and just because like you've never had to think about something doesn't mean that like you're not capable. Of, of doing that, if yeah. that makes sense. Like, okay, growing up, I've never had to think about putting food on the table. But now I work like a full-time job and I can provide for myself if, mm-hmm. I, if, if I needed to, you know? It's mm-hmm. not that I'm not capable of working because when I was a kid, like I never had to think about that. Like now I'm an adult, I'm a cap- very much capable of taking on adult responsibilities. Like just because I my, my family is providing me with some privilege doesn't mean that like, oh, you know, I think it just I don't know how to work. work. Yeah, I think it comes back to the topic where it's like some people just have a jump start. You know yeah, I mean? yeah. Like, and there's understand. something rewarding about being able yeah. to earn your own money mm-hmm. and take care of yourself. Like knowing right now that like with with the path I'm going and like what I'm doing right now, like I can be fully self sufficient. I think there's a certain sense of like pride in that. And when I applied to my job, like okay, I didn't have my dad make a phone call to my company and be like, "Yo, my daughter wants a job." Mm-hmm. That was 
that was not how I got my job. Like, my mm-hmm. dad didn't even know where I was applying, and neither did my mom, by the way. Like, <laughs> before he also was like, oh, you didn't want me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I just applied through LinkedIn, networked with people, and like, leveraged my skills, you know, leveraged my education, mm-hmm. and then I got the job. And now I, I'm not treated differently than anybody else. I still have the same responsibilities. I still have to, I, I still have obligations. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, I still very much have to work just as hard. Mm-hmm. Like, it's not like, I just get to sit in an office and SJ I guess there's, yeah, there's mm-hmm. some things that make it easier though, I guess in some No, ways. no I, 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 com- I completely get where you're coming from. Like I think, mm-hmm. of course, being able to afford that kind of education means mm-hmm. like being able to afford that like job, yeah. better opportunities, like you're putting your best foot forward. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, at every level of privilege, like there are people with less, uh, I think right now we're just talking about finances, yeah? Mm-hmm. There are people with less financial privilege th- than me mm-hmm. who have gone further than me. Mm-hmm. And there are people with more who have yeah, not been yeah. able to get even half as far. Really mm-hmm. good point. And then there's really the, good point. Really there's good the point. whole thing about like, you know, when you're a woman, mm-hmm. you know, ah. and I'm a religious and racial minority here in Indonesia. Those are things that aren't necessarily, you know, th- those don't make it easier mm-hmm. on me. Mm-hmm. And there are certain challenges that I've had to go through in my life that, you know, unthinkable. Mm-hmm. I'm just going to say that. Unthinkable. Um, and so those are like the, the bad cards, right? And I think everyone gets dealt a different set of cards, and it's just how you play them that matters. Mm-hmm. I have people in higher positions than me, or in the same position, and they came from like you know in Indonesian universities, blah blah blah. Like they're still worth their salt. Mm-hmm. And there's I, a privilege in that too, where they understand mm-hmm. the market and the culture as well. Yeah. Which is what I'm very envious now working in. Yeah. Like, you know, <laughs> exactly. Oh yeah. That is what I'm absolutely jealous of like being able to like get the cultural context that's yeah. something that i don't have yeah, yeah. So cultural context we're many of that this. way you know mm-hmm. yeah. yeah so we got our strengths and our weaknesses yeah. in different checks areas. and balances mm-hmm. yeah i think it's a good segue into talking about if we're just going to focus on indonesian international students mm-hmm. like even all of us like we are not a monolith and black being like we're very much viewed as just like all these rich kids that go to you know international schools and then they're gonna go abroad like you said like mm-hmm. for your vacation abroad and then they're gonna take over family businesses i know indonesian i know indonesian international students that don't have family businesses to take over and so they very much rely on being able to you know network and get good grades and you know being able to get that job after graduation can i just say like the first from, from my personal experience to do with that mm-hmm. like with my parents their entire goal because you know I, I've, I've asked them this like hey you sent me to like really expensive schools and like i, I did get a scholarship for uni but it's still it was still expensive i asked them you know like are you expecting a return on investment? That's what a lot of wow. Indonesians ask. Are you expecting a return on investment? I, I asked my parents that when I was applying for jobs. I was like, you know, I'm not going to be able to pay back the tuition. They're like, that's not the point. Like, we're not asking for a return on investment. The investment is in you as a person, like who you become, your character, mm-hmm. your skills, your capabilities. And knowing that if anything ever happened to my parents or whatever it is, I can hold my own. I don't have to go around knocking on people's doors asking for money because I know how, like it's about that independence that gets developed right yeah. from, like going to school abroad from a young age because a lot a lot of kids who stay in Indonesia I'm sorry but like a lot of kids who stay in Indonesia aren't independent because they live with their parents their entire lives coddle they're coddled. They're, they're their parents. Coddled, it's also part of the culture, though. Mm-hmm. It is, yeah. Here, so yeah. I guess there's this thing where it's like you have to take care of your parents in Indo. Yeah. It's like there's like no, that, no, no, that, no. Yeah. Like yeah, yeah. like my parents, but my parents didn't want to put that pressure yeah, on yeah, us. Yeah, they're yeah. just mm-hmm. kind of like we're gonna retire somewhere and like live our lives. But the thing is, no matter what happens. We can we we can like sustain ourselves. Mm-hmm. Speaking of privilege, that's a privilege. The fact that you don't gotta take care of your parents. Some of us have to take care of our <laughs> it, parents. It's a very Indo thing where it's like you should live with them until you are married. Mm-hmm. And, no, and the other home. thing is, and okay, I think this kind of applies more to Indonesian men mm-hmm. and Asian men. I would mm-hmm. dare I say Asian men in general. It's mm-hmm. like they get taken care of by their mothers their entire lives. Mm-hmm. Even throughout college, mm-hmm. right? W- like being in Indonesia or whatever, mm-hmm. and then eventually they get handed off to a wife to who has to do the exact same thing. We'll have to take care of them, right? So they say, "Guy, get Oh, that is a right? <laughs> topic. For that's another a, day. That's a topic for another day. And oh, I need a drink for that topic. Yeah. Yes, even though they didn't go to international school or they didn't go to school in LA, mm-hmm. they're still very much cuddled, sometimes more so than the kids who are privileged enough to go to 
uni in LA like you and mm -hmm. like to go to international schools or like go to Australia or whatever, mm -hmm. you know? So like I see like an opposite where in certain aspects we're not as spoiled. Yeah. And in fact, people who are like um, in Indonesia are more spoiled. Mm -hmm. It's the people calling us spoiled that they themselves are spoiled and they don't Sometimes, know about themselves. Sometimes, yeah. I would, I'm not saying that it applies to every aspect, but th there are certain parts where like it's kind of like a flipped situation. Yeah. Cupcake. Oh. Cupcake. I've had one. I've had two! The last sorry. one was a coffee one, and I can't do that. Nathan, sorry. Like it's all <laughs> no, no tea, no shade. I'm just saving, <laughs> saving space no, for omakase tonight. No shade. Oh, where are you going? Oh, cool. Oh, there's also a thing I wanted to touch on. I don't know if this is like, because I okay. So kind of, I kind of dipped out of the inner community pretty quickly. I mean, yeah, I so did I, it. sweetie. I don't have a community here. Let's say the three of us are friends. <laughs> oh, we're lost souls. <laughs> Adopt us. We were we were chewed up and then spit out by the intercommunity. Literally, we, we, we need friends. We need friends. Um, no, actually, I, I'm surprised that I even have friends, guy. I really survived in Japan. I don't know how. People are very surprised, guy. I went ghost mode for like two years after I left. Just like did not talk to anyone. So, never left. But you did too. So my two but years of boarding I've been school. here the entire time, and now it's like. I don't know how this happened, guy. I just found people. I went out one night, then suddenly it's like no, I got that's adopted. How it happens. Yeah. That's how it happens. Before that's the happens. pandemic, at least. So, why does that not happen to me? Because you, don't you, go didn't, out you didn't go out. So, so before the okay, pandemic, well, that's, why, that's what I'm here for. <laughs> <laughs> She's gonna go crazy. I was taking me to the streets. My, my last two years <laughs> of high back. school. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> my, my last two years of high school, when I was in the UK, I just completely dipped out. I didn't. I, I barely talked to anybody that I went to school with, whatever. Like I just mm -hmm. kind of. I had created my own community there, right? Mm -hmm. And I, like, I just, I just never found like the time or the the need to like really socialize with people here as well. Like mm -hmm. it was just whatever. Um, and then I only started really maybe hanging out with Indonesians again, like I'd say sophomore year of college when I'd come home for like summer or winter for like a week or two. Mm -hmm. And then I'd have like one Indo friend, and then he'd introduce me to another Indo friend it or just... whatever. It's and, like and a real domino effect, man. And yeah. most of the time, it's just be like all of us partying together, don't you think? Like that was the whole scene. Because that's the, because that's the only thing that people know how to do. Yeah, you know what? After like you go out, there's moments where you are actually able to connect with them, and that's how I found like. I, mm, I, I haven't quite quite mastered that moment yet. I got you, girl. Yeah. It, they, they exist. They're out there. It's just you need to. You know, my thing yeah. is to get it out of them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You need to have that moment to actually connect because here, here's my rule in Jakarta: keep your circle small and don't trust anybody and don't. Yes. Pretend you know nothing. If someone comes up to you and asks you, like, "Oh God, we can do another topic about like Jakarta culture in general." Oh please. My one-on-one -on -one guide on how to survive here from like years of bullying and like gossiping to like my rep and whatever but like just keep your circle small don't trust anybody initially three mm -hmm. don't talk too much about your personal life and four if someone tells you something and asks you like oh did you hear like she was like this she was like mm -mm. just listen don't participate mm -mm. don't even say that you know Mayo. don't even mention that you're aware of it because you know what there's so much power in just being silent mm -hmm. and getting all that information and saying nothing you will yes. feel so much better about yourself going home See, mm -hmm. if you did not participate in that mm -hmm. and that is something I, that i had to learn like two three years ago and i'm so glad that i'm here mm. no but you know what Ooh. it's actually like kind of easy for me to stay silent like that because mm -hmm. especially when before I got super used to the whole like mixing thing, the Indonesian mm -hmm. English mixing, or like mm -hmm. a lot of the times Indonesian, like even in inner kids, they would just speak Indo. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't always catch the tea. Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't always understand, yeah. like, I, or like it would take me like a couple moments to process. So before I could react, like I'm still processing. And then by the time like, it, like I've understood enough to react, like the conversation's over. So I'm just like silent, like listening, mm -hmm. you know, like improving my Indo. <laughs> it's interesting that you guys find yourself in that kind of a situation. Actually, for me, it's the complete opposite. Like, I barely ever find myself in that kind of a situation. Just more so, like, I legit, I don't know anybody. No, no but the thing is something we're that... Out tonight. We're going out tonight. We're going out tonight. We're going out tonight. Something that's been really tough for me is someone... Like, I left Indo early. I left when I was 15. Mm -hmm. um, and for six years, like, high school and college, I barely had any Indonesian friends, like, wherever I was. And I was so close. I built, like, such strong connections with the people abroad and almost none of them were in Indonesia, maybe like one or two. Yeah. And even then, like we weren't so close then, but mm -hmm. we became closer now that we both, we've all moved back. But I'm so envious sometimes of like the Indonesians who have had friends since high school or friends since college, or at least known like an Indonesian community. Mm -hmm. Because even when I'm making friends here, like I'm not saying I have no friends here. Like I've made so many, uh, I've met so many people over the past like 
one and a half years that I've moved back and like they're so welcoming and everything but there's still like this disconnect that because like we don't have that history they're talking about like, hey, remember when we did this at prom like four years ago? Or like, hey, you remember? Or they'll when say some like cultural like yeah. joke or like mm -hmm. slang or, or that like I'm... some go-to place of theirs. Like a phone line like... that I was never aware of yeah, from the very beginning. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. It's, yeah. Or like even the tea. Like there's so much like history. Like I don't. I, there's so tea, much like yeah. context, right? Mm -hmm. So like half the time I don't understand the tea because I don't know the whole history behind it. Mm -hmm. And then so all of that like it's so hard because as much as I wanna like connect and everything it's just not the same i so, i sometimes i feel like it's okay until i start talking to my friends from college and my friends from high school and then i realize what's been missing mm -hmm. i'm sorry that was really gay i think yeah. part of it's just realizing it's a different way of connecting I, yeah yeah for me actually surprisingly like connecting with all these like people that have grown up here and lived here is like i feel like i'm getting closer with my mom mm -hmm. i'm understanding more of my own culture like being able to speak my own mother tongue like, mm -hmm. that sort of thing i feel like i'm way more self-sufficient mm -hmm. actually a really important thing i wanted to ask so because again i'm, I'm not going to uni abroad mm -hmm. so once you go to uni abroad and you graduate mm -hmm. why is it that most inner kids come back uh the <laughs> indonesian ones yeah the special indonesian ones right yeah Okay, because the Why Indonesian, no, no, not not solely I say the pandemic because I always see them coming back. And for no, me, I know my whole thing is like if I were to work abroad, mm -hmm. I don't know, I don't know how this works, but if I were to sorry go to school abroad, I would want to work abroad for oh, yeah. a while. Oh yeah, I had a job lined up there. abroad. Yeah. Wow. Um, mm -hmm. Pandemic aside, because yeah, that did happen to some people like you, but no, it's been happening forever. Like you yeah, mentioned. and it's because. You have to take into consideration that a lot of the Indonesians that have the privilege of going abroad, a lot of them tend to be chindos because there is correlation between being chindo and having more money compared to like a lot of the local Indonesians. That is, um, if that upsets anybody, but look, that's just like a, that's just a fact, right? And so a lot of them, they tend to be chindos. Mm -hmm. Like, especially if you're looking at countries like the Anglosphere, like US, Canada, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Australia, yeah, UK, yeah, yeah, yeah. and then they always come back. You know what? A lot of these chindos, they have family businesses. They come back to take over uh, mommy and, daddy mommy and daddy's yeah, business. Mommy and daddy's business. Mommy and Really, a lot of it boils back down to, oh yeah, I come back for my family, either my family business or take care of my parents. Mm. That's it. That's 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 mm. really a lot of the times the big big reason why. Mm. I think what's more common now is working in the U.S. or Canada or Australia for a few years and then eventually come back. So that was the path that I was gonna take. That was what I was gonna do as well. Yeah, and then that completely um, backfired. So. so for for me, I think I was. <laughs> very exceptional case because um china was hit first by the pandemic right oh, i mean yeah, yeah. Ooh. um so when i left shanghai for winter break that was january uh 2020 oh it was just like a growing virus in wuhan and it, there were like maybe two cases in shanghai so they were like just starting to be careful in shanghai right they were starting to like buy masks and stuff and i come back to Jakarta, I was like, oh, I came back just in time, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. wait for this whole flu thing to blow over in a couple mm -hmm. of weeks. And then you got stuck here. For yeah, and, no, and, and then um, I wait, Shanghai released like an announcement when it started, like when Shanghai went on lockdown, like, actually, we're not going to postpone for another two weeks. Now you can choose. You can either go to a different NYU campus. Mm -hmm. So any of the study centers, like you could go to London, Tel Aviv, whatever, like there are like 36 different ones. Yeah. Um, or you could go to New York and Abu Dhabi, which are like the big, big rebranded campuses mm -hmm. besides Shanghai. So a lot of my friends went to New York. But I didn't want to choose to go to New York because I was holding out the hope to come back to Shanghai. Because if you chose to go to New York, then you spend the whole semester there. Right, and it was my last semester, and I, I wanted to spend my last semester in Shanghai. Mm -hmm. um, so I was like, okay, yeah, no, 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 like I'll do online for now until we can come back to Shanghai mm -hmm. by like April. Mm -hmm. You know, one yeah. of the things and I had to thank the pandemic for is just <laughs> go on TikTok. Like, yeah. No, and then I had a job lined up. I'm not gonna say the company, um, but I had a job lined up, and it was within like the Shanghai free trade zone or whatever, and I had like a special permit from NYU to get a working permit right after college. Everything wow. was set up. Everything was set up. Um, but because I couldn't come back, mm -hmm. and then they realized that they couldn't sponsor working permits for the time being, it was like suspended. And so mm -hmm. they were like, well, we can't wait, we need you like on site, and then it, the whole pandemic thing, and they were like, we're, we're so sorry, mm -hmm. but we're gonna have to like move forward Terminate and everything. Yeah. That was the other thing that I also wanted to mention, mm -hmm. like yes, for a lot of Indonesian international students mm -hmm. especially, they do come back. Take care of the family, take care of the family business, what have mm -hmm. you. But there are also, you know, not, like, let's not discount the kids that wanted to work 
in countries like the US, UK, Canada. But and then like got we, affected by it, yeah. Well, not even like with the pandemic, but just like work legislations towards international students, mm -hmm. like they've never really been that forgiving and it's never been that easy for us to begin with. And then especially if you look at countries like the US with the administration of, you know, the Cheeto presidency and, you know, <laughs> right? All, all, all of that stuff, it's a lot of, it's a lot of, it's a lot of politics yeah. in, in, involved. And like, basically what I'm trying to say is there, there are also the international students that want that job mm -hmm. in their host country wherever they did college even to never come back to their home country and like to stay in that country in their host country like forever and after and that completely not working out for them i have friends that are like that like they were banking mm -hmm. on the hopes of being able to get that sponsorship in the u.s and like build a life like a permanent life in the u.s for themselves and why what happened Oh, okay. Yeah. I, I never had any internships in Indo. Yeah. I was always planning to work abroad. Yeah. But they were banking on the hopes of being able to stay in the US forever and like actually build a future for themselves. And then, you know, just one night it's like, okay, you got to pack up all your shit and leave because we're deporting you. See, and I guess that was the tough thing. There's also that stereotype where it's like, go to the other country. Yeah. I got the kerja, and it's then the hard. pandemic happened. Well, okay. Yeah. With me, so with with me, I mean, yeah, because you don't have an experience with this because you haven't even started college. Yeah. With me, I know I couldn't get hired. Like nobody wanted to hire me. It's also kind of a lottery, to be honest. It is a lottery. I, I will say that I got pretty lucky. It's almost impossible yeah. to get hired as a foreign graduate. I didn't get hired in the U.S., but I didn't get hired in Jakarta either. Nobody wanted to hire me. Like legit, like in no country, nobody wanted to. I applied to so many different jobs. I got rejection upon rejection upon rejection, and so. I mean, uh, what I guess I'm applying for by the way? investment banking. Oh my god! Yeah, I wanted to. Yeah, so once oh, upon a time I wanted to be an investment banker. The, the I was a finance girl. Uh, yeah, so I applied to all of those. Morgan Stanley, J J P Morgan, Morgan JP Stanley, Morgan. Bank of America, Merrill Lynch. I applied to all, like all of the big investment banking companies. I was even applying to other jobs that were not in investment banking, that were not even in finance. Like at some point, I was just so desperate. I just I needed something. So at least I can make some income so that one, I don't feel like, you know, a fucking useless piece of shit. Like I'm just living like off of my mom at home and like literally not doing anything, not doing anything productive. Like, I needed the income to like Higher. maybe not, to not, well, I mean, now I'm not, no. now I'm not looking for, for a job anymore. Yeah, oh, sponsor me. The, just, yeah, I'm not looking for a job anymore. Mm -hmm. But I mean, you know what? I, I, I think about it over and over again. Like, because becoming an author has something, it has been something that I've always wanted to do. I just, I was never sure when I would do it, right? Um. And I, like, I thought about it over and over again. I think if I had gotten in that investment banking gig, I would have never written a book. I would have never written that book. I never would have met you. You'd be surprised just how many doors that book has opened for me. JU included, right? Yeah. Like, also, I guess in the grand scheme of things too, it's like if I had gotten that investment banking gig and I'd be an investment banker now, I wouldn't be doing any of this. Like none of this would be happening. Yeah, like mm. so in spite, I, I'm not saying that my life is perfect. I still go through a lot of shit. But like in spite of all of that, I'm pretty happy with mm -hmm. where my life is right yeah. now. Mm -hmm. And I don't know for sure that I would be this happy if with my life if things, things had gone yeah, uh, the way that, the way that I planned. To, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, same thing. Had I not like dropped out of GIS, or had I just like kept with the whole inner mm -hmm. circle, I would have never been able to connect with the people that I have now. Mm -hmm. Probably would have never gone back to like what I actually love to do. I'm actually quite a creative person. I probably would have like done some psychology shit, which is mm -hmm. something I also enjoy doing. But mm -hmm. like, you know, I'm very, very thankful. Like, just the amount of growth that all of these like hardships have taught me, and like mm -hmm. all the growth that's come from that. Yeah. So sometimes if things don't work out your way, it's supposed to work out that way so. yes yes i so believe that yeah. yeah i so believe that i'm dissociating so a little, I think a little bit a little bit too if i may like <laughs> offer a slight conclusion mm -hmm. right i think the whole idea of this video is like we are not just people that you can put into boxes there's not just one part of us and mm -hmm. i think there are so many different parts and you should always consider that it's not always shown on camera mm -hmm. and sometimes it's not as like glamorous and it's not as like fun to think about but it's there mm -hmm. so that we're, we're not just like one-dimensional people so. Dude, we have so much to talk about we do we definitely need to come back again chubby angels are coming for you i'm dissociating me too <laughs> thank you all we have for watching on. Are, we, are we good i feel like the, the it's like there's there's too, too much, much to, to touch, touch on. on i honestly don't know how you're gonna edit this if you need help i will I I, I'm probably I'm, I'm gonna drink a lot of coffee and like stay up late at night and then cry editing all of this mm -hmm. uh, tea so like we're we were supposed to <laughs> this this whole day was just completely like 
the the word for today is ngaret because you were in, you were supposed to come at 1 p.m. right? I came at two. You came at you came at two. You were supposed to came at three. You came at like what four? Four. four. Yeah, and I didn't know that she had dinner plans with her sister to do omakase. Of it's all my things. sister's birthday tomorrow. I gotta oh, take right. her out. Oh right. And then you have dinner plans with your sister like literally right now tonight. Yeah, and like wants to go. And then. No, I know you got to go too because your mom called you and like something. Oh no no no, that, that wasn't that. actually. I'm meeting my boyfriend's best friends for the first time. I'm really fucking. Oh nice right, that too. And like yeah. you're, and then you're meeting your boyfriend. Are boyfriend's you doing anything tonight? And I'm not doing anything tonight. Would you like to come to Folk You? It's a really nice like Vietnamese faux like restaurant slash bar. They're playing like house music tonight. I literally just remembered. See, and then it's my like mom, and then my mom texted me. She was like, "Don't go anywhere out tonight because she just had to drive her home." So Mer like, Mercury is still in retrograde. That's why things mm -hmm. are not going yeah. go, going our way for today, especially. But it's okay. Anyways, thank you so much for watching, you guys. I know this is y'all. Y'all been waiting for this, and there's gonna be more of this, right? We can promise them that, right? Yes. The more. amount of topics we've branched off to, I think we figured out about new. That's so it's much fun today. It's yeah. just I feel I literally like this video is not even up yet, and I feel it in the comments that they're gonna want more from the three of us, specifically the three of us, right? As a trio. So now this trio is like a permanent thing. Copyright this shit. Uh, we have to figure out a name. If you guys have any name suggestions, let yes. us know in the comments okay, down below. Okay, that could be the thing. Whoever comes up with the best name gets a giveaway from Inda. I don't know what the giveaway would be, but we're yeah, gonna sure. do it. We're gonna do it. I mean, yeah, this is where we wrap up the video because these two gotta leave, and like, I'm also I'm getting tired anyway, and like, I just want to crawl into bed and cry to sad music. So, <laughs> thank you so much for watching, you guys, and we will see you very soon. Bye bye. See you in the next video. Take care, guys. Unhinged. 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 Stay tuned to my podcast show. She'll she'll be on one episode very soon.